Uh, one of the challenges that I faced when I first started riding, and that I know a lot of other amputees face when they when they want to start cycling more seriously, is that you you want to use a pedal system that uh, that involves cleats, so that you're actually attached to the pedals and you can generate the most power. However, that creates an issue with uh, getting out of the cleats, which actually even able-bodied cyclists find difficult at times, but it's extremely difficult to rotate the heel out hard enough to, to disengage from the pedal. It's something that's super easy on the right hand side, I can just do it like that, but on the left hand side is far more difficult to get the rotation. These pedals that I have are the easiest ones I've ever found, but still it's, it's not something I like to do. I always try to clip out on the right side first. Uh, Okay, well, I'll talk about a few of the things that, uh, a few challenges um, that I face as an amputee cycling. Uh, the, the, main, the main thing that uh, I, I feel causes me to lose a little bit of power um, when I'm cycling is the flex that I get from my uh, Modular 3, my Flex Foot Modular 3, which is made for walking. It has a little bit too much flex for cycling, so as I, if I stand up out of the, out of the saddle, um, I, I feel a little bit of a bounce, or if I'm climbing a hill and putting a lot of power through the pedals, uh, I'll feel a little bit of a flex there, and that's not uh, ideal for cycling. If I had um, all the money in the world, I would buy another one that was far stiffer uh, and would not flex, and therefore all of 100% of my power would go straight through to the pedals. Um, another, uh, an, another interesting adaptation that uh, my prosthetist made because I ride my bike so often is uh, at the back, he rolled, rolled the, I'm not sure what you call this, but he rolled the back part of my prosthesis um, lower than it would normally be if I only used it for walking. And that's, that was to allow my, um, my pedal stroke to, to go more smoothly. So as I, as I get to this point of the pedal stroke, it doesn't bind. And uh, that makes it far more comfortable and I can ride longer and more effectively uh, because he did that. I have a, you know, I have a good push a pretty decent pull but across the top and along the bottom because you're trying to, you're supposed to, to, to ride well, you're supposed to try to make even circles. A lot of people just mash down but you're just supposed to make even circles and um, it's very hard to do with your prosthesis because you you can push and you can you can even get a pretty good pull with my suspension system uh, which is a I think you would call it a pin system but um, pushing along the top and uh, pulling along the bottom are far more difficult. It, it, the leg is not really designed to function that way very well. And so I end up being more of a push and a pull cyclist on that side. You can always tell a bike that, I've, that I own because there's going to be chips along the top tube here. And that's from the, from the rivet on the inside of my prosthesis, which I talked to my uh, prosthetist a lot about uh, relocating, and which he told me, no. <laughs> He said it had to be there, and so uh, I have to put up with these uh, paint chips on the top of my bike, but it's a small price to pay for being out on the road.